outside the off stump. Oh, he's caught it! I don't believe it! Tom Kohler Cadmore has caught the most magnificent catch. That short third man is the end of Daniel Sams, and Somerset have won the Vitality Blast 2023. They've bowled Essex out for 131. I'm recording. Hello there, you're listening to Always Look at the Bright Side of Life. This is the Somerset Cricket Podcast. My name's Ian Shepherd, as you can tell by my, or probably guess from my slightly breathless uh, demeanour, I've just literally sat down at my desk in the Roll of Van der Merwe Pavilion, jumped on a team's call with Dan Kingdom, and breathe. I think if we thought finals day last year was an emotional roller coaster, Dan, that, is, that was just the most incredible hour of cricket county cricket certainly i think i've ever seen it was just just mad yeah anyway thanks this whole match (laughs) i mean where where do we start i mean i'm I'm gonna have to put this out there straight away that don topley has gone from being our unofficial nemesis or our official nemesis whatever you want to call him to our good luck charm because it was petering along and then about he turned up at the ground at about Oh, God, I've lost track of time now. Quarter to four, I'm going to say, something like that. And then all of a sudden we started taking wickets. Um, yeah. So Don, Don Topley is now our official uh, mascot. Could probably be the club's official mascot, really, replacing Stumpy. I'd rather see Don wandering around the outfield of a, of a T20 game. As you can probably tell, I'm a bit emotionally overwhelmed and struggling to form this podcast into any sort of coherent structure. And I'm very much... Uh, uh, very much free flowing because there is so much to talk about in this game. Yeah, there is. I mean, should we Dan, go back to the start of the match? Should we go back to the start of the match? We won the toss, right? I'm going to try and do this. Remember, we won the toss. Lewis Gregory, uh, Lewis Goldsworthy was out second ball. Yeah. We dropped Andy Umid and bought in Brett Randall. Yeah. Um, Surrey bought in Shaki Balhassan. We'll get onto that in a minute. That that's incredibly hilarious. <laughs> and. What did we end up getting? We ended up 300 off for five. Banton got 100, played really well. And then we lost five for not very many at the end of the day, which must have been calculated because if we'd have batted on for an extra 10 minutes, we'd have lost the game. So who are we to question the Somerset lower order? So I've rambled on, Dan. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, that's the thing. It, 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 it did allow us to be a bit more efficient, us being bowled out quickly that night. I mean, it looked bad at the time, but, you know, with rain around, it, it moved the game on. and. Yeah, in the end, it, it may well have helped us win. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, I didn't see any of the first day, but um, it, it was, you know, I, I was encouraged by how we batted, particularly Banton, who played a great innings, 1-3-2 off 1-7-2. Um, and, you know, we, we, we scored, you know, quickly enough, got a couple of batting points. We'd have liked to get a couple more. Um, but, you know, it, it, it on that pitch, it was probably a decent score, and it looked even better when we had them, what, 228 for eight. In the second innings, it was just then Tom Curran who looked to have mm-hmm. taken the game away from us um, with a, a quite excellent knock, hate to say it, uh, well, 86 of 75. I've got a brilliant story to tell about Tom Curran. This oh, is nice. this is fantastic, right? So uh, I think me and my mate Dave, we left the ground about five to six. Walking out in front of us is everybody's favourite uh, player, Tom Curran. Walks up to a car. Well, who's that? It's Deliveroo, isn't it? He's got himself a little cheeky Nando's, isn't he? <laughs> but then, if you work back, this Nando's has arrived at six o'clock, which means what's the average Deliveroo time at tea time for a Nando's? Probably about forty-five minutes. Yeah, I'd say that. But Tom, experience. Tom, uh, Tom Currens, he's got out. He's think, do you know what? This is safe. I'll order myself a little cheeky Nando's, and now he's got to sit there in a dressing room, which is wondering how the hell they fucked this game up, stuffing his Nando's while Gareth Batty and Alex Stewart look at him. Oh, dear. What are you doing, Thomas? What are you doing with your Nando's? Deary Classic me. Deary me. Yeah, Classic a, Tom Curran. There was a fun moment yesterday where the, the crowd were, you know, there was a, something, a couple of things were said, including like, you're not as good as your brother. And that was what prompted Tom to, you know, gesture to the crowd yesterday when he took when he got Jack Leach out as though getting Jack Leach out is proof that he's actually better <laughs> than Sam uh, at cricket 
Yeah, he just he can't help himself, can he? It's just the way the way he is. He can't no. help being the, but the pantomime villain. Give him credit though. He was the only Surrey batter who tried to move that game along. I know that's how he plays, and this is his first Red Bull game in two years. But yep. they lost that game by batting like absolute twats. Yeah. At no point did they turn up to Taunton as the champions going, do you know what? We're the champions. We've lost a few, but we yeah. signed one of the best players in the world and we're going to beat you at Taunton and we're going to effectively win the title at your ground and we're going to leave on our coach and we're going to dick you on finals day as well and we're going to laugh at you. Or, well, not laugh at yeah. you because obviously that's probably a bit too far, but do you know what I mean? We're going to dominate you and at no yeah. stage do they ever do that. The run rates, the, their scoring rates was absolutely diabolical. And we're not talking about kids at the academy. By the way, we'll talk about one of those in a minute. Burns, Sibley, current, well, we'll talk, not current, folks, international yeah. batters. I mean, they bat, Jordan Clark can, can bat. He's coming yeah. in at what? Yeah. Number nine? And I just was absolutely dumbfounded by their approach because at no point did they move the game on and look to yeah. dominate. And oh, it was just utterly. Utterly negative cricket, and it's bitten them on the ass. Yeah, it's great. I mean, their approach it's today great. Was, it is great. <laughs> I know it's great. I love it. Their approach today was bizarre. I thought yeah. initially, like, I think they, I'm sure they must have started that chase, thinking, yeah, we're going to try and get this. I know they did start very slowly, but I thought they were just, you know, trying to take the shine off the kookaburra. We know that it only swings for a few overs. Yeah. They were trying to just take the shine off it. It's to some extent how Burns and Sibley play. I thought they were just setting a platform, but then. Hmm. I guess that they lost. Two, I think a few things happened. For example, they lost two wickets in and over, which set them back a bit. I think mean, Geddes was trying to get himself in, then he got out, and it also rained as well, which may hmm. have, which obviously reduced the number of overs available for them. Although they must have known that there would be a lot of overs to get there because we were obviously bowling yeah. a lot of spin. Um, but during that Sibley and Folks partnership, there was no gradual ramping up of the scoring rate. Particularly, no. there was a lot of two flourishes, but there was no ramping up of the scoring rate to try and get there. They never really showed much interest in in in, in chasing it down, which I find absolutely mad because they they could have I think at some point, what if I was a Surrey fan, I'd be thinking that at some point sibling folks, one of them, probably folks, should have gone on the attack a bit, knowing that okay, if I get out that's fine. But in that case, send in Tom Curran to try and play an innings like he did on yeah. on the previous on the previous day, two days ago. Um but I mean, a hundred and nine, a hundred and nine all out in seventy-eight overs. Run rate of yeah. below one point four, one point three nine. That's just, yeah. that's just utterly timid. Burns yeah. international, Sibley international, Patel quality player, Geddes and play much, Folks international, Shakib international, uh, Tom Curran international, Jordan Clark can bat, Cameron Steele can bat, and Kamar Roach can block and end up. Yeah, and you're telling me that that lot can't score at three and a half and over to effectively win the championship. Yeah, it's amazing. We we had them rattled clearly. Like they, they you we know, sounded like disappointed Surrey fans match. for the last five minutes. Should we, should we ramp it up a bit? I mean, there's just so much, uh, just so much to to go through. I mean, I, I'm just going to literally blurt things out here. I mean, Tom Banton breaking the world hundred meters record on crutches to get out to the to the middle to celebrate was was just yeah. incredible. He was. I mean, so we talk about that as well, because the, the, I, I think that has settled now whether Tom Banton is going to sign a new contract or not. I, th I think I like that's think pretty so. much settled, don't you? Yeah, I hope so. Monday is the day to announce it. Maybe even tomorrow. Yeah, or whenever, whenever now, it doesn't really matter. There, I, there isn't going to be a slow news day between now and the end of September, so uh, whenever, whenever is good. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, I mean, that crucial partnership coming out, not only the runs that were scored, but the time it put into the game as well, or took out the game, whichever, I don't know. Uh, brain still frazzled. Just incredible. Just absolute size of the bollocks on the guy. Yeah. We, Unreal. We were 122 for eight, 118 ahead, with yeah. a, an hour and a day remaining. Roy I'm sorry, probably would have took all that time to get them as well. Yeah, yeah maybe. But although I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Rory Burns was talking to the umpire last night as though he was asking, can we have an extra half hour to, you know, to try and win it tonight? He may not have been saying that, oh, but he was talking to the umpire at that point. Probably he was also thinking that Banton wouldn't bat. But it was from yeah. that moment on when Leach and Craig had a good little partnership of 31. And then Banton coming out 
with using his bat as a crutch. An absolute yeah. hero. And then the pair of them, Banton and Craig, added 71. Like, that changed the momentum completely. Like, last Absolutely. night and this morning. And it, it made it, like, we left the ground last night thinking, wow, we're 190 ahead here. You never know in that situation. Mm. It it could have been a 120, 130 change, which they almost certainly would have done. It was yeah. something to bowl out, but they almost certainly would have done it. But 190 is getting towards a stage where, you know, we are well in the game. Yeah. And while they were definitely favourites at the end of yesterday, and they were definitely favourites at the moment we were bowled out this morning as well. Um, I mean, we always had a, a real chance of winning, particularly with, on that pitch. You know, not that it was turning massively, but you know, giving enough assistance to the spinners. Um, I mean, with the cooker or a ball, I mean, which we bowled really well with in this game and the last game, the the, the two spinners. Yeah. Um, so we were always in it. Um, and yeah, once we once we went bang bang and got those first two wickets in the chase, we, we remained in it for most of the innings, apart from that period was... where folks in Sydney looked to be seeing out for a draw. But then again, one wicket fell, and suddenly, you know, we all know what can happen. If a new bat yeah. comes in, the game changes, and that's what happened. And they just completely lost their heads. Well, they it lost was... their heads in the way of not really knowing what they were doing. I mean, it was, oh, it was so, they, they it somehow, was... despite being defensive, failed to bat out an hour. But for me, that's losing, losing the losing of a head. Yeah, um, despite it, the was... fact it wasn't attacking shots. I mean, as well, they just put put us under no pressure at all. Lewis Gregory just knew yeah. that he could bowl Archie Vaughan and. Um, Jack Leach all day. Oh, the only I mean, time they did it was, field. you know, our, our favourite player, Tom Curran. And again, it, it's quite funny, actually, giving Tom Curran credit for being the best player in a Surrey loss is absolutely amazing. I love that. that that's great. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I think he smashed goal, Goldsworthy for about his 18 or 20 in and over. And that was a real counterpunch. That was like, right, OK, well, Leach is tired, Vaughan's tired. You want to try something new? No, not. You got to think again now. You got to bring somebody else on because I've just, you know, I've just yeah. with your backup spinner for for twenty. So try something else, please. But today it was just okay. Oh, you keep bowling. Are you? Oh, they're bowling. Oh, they're bowling. Oh, they're bowling. Oh, right. Um, all right. Well, it's, it's about an hour. It's about an hour. Oh, okay, it's about an hour. It's about an hour. Oh, we lost a wicket. Oh, we lost three. Oh, we lost three. Oh, we lost four. Five for six. They lost in twenty five minutes before the yeah. um uh little. Richard Clark before Roach and uh, Clark put on a, a bit of a partnership after that. Uh, Jack Leach, uh, I can't remember what's going on. Yeah, Dan Morrill, yeah, he got uh, Clark caught behind and Le- uh, Worrell LBW of the final ball, the 78th ever, with about three minutes to go as well. That's the other mad thing. Everyone's yeah. just looking at that clock uh, ticking down. I mean, I was in the press box. I was, I was nearly went next to all to and said ben can you just sort of make it go a bit slower can you kind of yeah. just hide it or put a graphic up or something or just make it run backwards um in the end we didn't need to that's why championship cricket is the best just an absolute yeah. nothing day of surrey failing to win lose or win or draw the game and then all of a sudden bang in that last hour it just goes absolutely bananas um i've literally not had a chance to look at any of the stuff that's been put out um but i imagine lewis gregory must have been pretty close to having one eye on the bus trip and up to finals day and getting off the pitch but i was worried we were going to shake shake hands when when, you know when they when they were still three down you know we we got the fourth wicket just before the last hour started and i was worried if we hadn't Mm. taken that wicket i don't think we would have shaken hands straight away but we probably weren't far away. But it just shows never, ever give up because you just no. never know what's around the corner. Like, if you take one wicket, the whole game can change. And that's, yeah. that's what happened today. Like, it was yeah, a, yeah. a ridiculous hour of cricket. Tom Curran's after yeah. his Nando's. Um, all yeah. this sort of thing, you know. He could have, yeah, mind not. I've never had a Nando's myself. What is it, Piri chicken or something? Oh, God knows. Yeah. Oh, right then. <laughs> Um, should we laugh at them for wasting money on Shakib Al Hassan as well? I mean, they were so desperate huh. for spin, but I mean, what the hell did he bowl? In our first innings, he bowled 33 out of 95, or 33.5 out of 95.5 overs. Uh, and then the second innings, he bowled 29.3 overs out of 63.3 overs. So, uh, maths gone out the head at the moment, but he's bowled quite a lot of their overs. And when you consider that Cameron Steele uh, in the second innings bowled one over compared to um, Shakib's 30-odd and five compared to his 30-odd in the first, not really signing him because you haven't got any spinners, have you? You're signing him because you want to come to Taunton 
win the game and then go back up the M4 as M5 and M4 as champions. Ha yeah, ha ha! Mate, not... Didn't work that way. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to blame them for signing him. It's perfectly within the rules. Like I know it's a bit weird and it's very very sorry. I mean, to it's do it's that, in but... it's in the rules. It doesn't yeah. pass the sniff test, does it? No, it's but just a it bit is... odd. It's. Yeah. Not many counties would do it. Not many counties would have the money to do it. Like, right. but in, you know, the other way of looking at it is Shakib is a great of the game. Bangladesh is best ever player, and it's good that he's playing in the county championship. And it added, yeah. it definitely added to the spectacle. I mean, that's that's the pro Surrey way of looking at it. I don't really want to take sides on it because I can kind of see both sides. And there's been a lot of discourse on Twitter. Um, but I'm just delighted that it absolutely did not work for them. And yeah. I'm also delighted that they were. It just showed how rattled they were. You know, they they yeah. lost Will Jackson. They thought, oh, it's Somerset. They're, we, hmm. they're not going to beat them unless we well, sign this overseas superstar. I mean, let's um, look at And it didn't even work. Again, for the second week in a row, or second championship game in a row at least, we have won with 10 academy players. Beat mm. Durham with 10 academy, or 10 homegrown Somerset players and Andy Amid, who's, who's from the uh, who's a soccer player. And then Brett Randall coming in uh, for this game. So 10 homegrown players. It's not exactly like we've got, you know, a half a dozen internationals in our in our side um, that we think, oh, we need to, uh, we know, we need to bolster it because we're not strong enough. No, we are a team that is greater than the sum of its parts. And, well, fuck me, ain't it brilliant? Should we talk about Archie? One more point. Oh, sorry, Dan. But just, just one more point about Surrey. They do have a spinner they could have played, of course, and his name is Amar Verdi, but they loaned yep. him out to Worcestershire. So, yeah, he's been treated terribly, and I can't believe he's still at Surrey, to be honest. I think he has to move on. At the end they probably of the don't even know where he is. They were like, yeah, is he maybe. at Worcester? Is he back at Taunton? Is he up at York? I know. Yeah, um, is, is, Mori- did they, is Moriarty's proper left now? He's not He's not on loan at York. He's at Yorkshire. Yeah, permanent yeah. Yorkshire, yeah. Oh, well, that was good. Um, right, let's talk about Archie Vaughan. Normally, a young spin bowler will bowl one, maybe two bad balls on over. Archie mm-hmm. Vaughan did not bowl one, maybe two bad balls over four days worth of cricket. I mean, yeah. Jesus Christ. Why the hell? He must be feeling like a right twat signing a, a deal in June because that deal would now probably be worth an extra 20 or 30 <laughs> grand if it was put to the table yeah. now. So um, I don't remember anybody coming in and having this much impact in a Somerset shirt from literally nothing. As a yeah, yeah, I mean, Rue kind of, but did Rue start off winning us his first two games? Probably not. Um, I mean, it's just it's just madness. What were his match figures in the end? Uh, six four hundred and two and yeah. five for thirty eight. So add that up, it's 11 for 140, which is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, oh, obviously it was helped by the fact, helped by the, it being the Kookaburra ball, which, you know, obviously there's been a lot of help for spinners with the Kookaburra. But yeah, there's not, it's not, that's not to take anything yeah. away from him. He's bowled right. remarkably well. I mean, he's probably never bowled this much in his life before. Right. He's obviously bowled the second 11, but, you know, he's not, this, this volume of overs must, is ridiculous. Adding the Durham game the other day as well. And yeah, he's just a very solid bowler, very accurate. He hmm. keeps putting it on the spot. He's yeah. you know good. He's getting getting left handers and right handers out. You know, it's yeah. he's, and and he's, he's, himself, he's not really sure if he's more of a batter or a bowler, and he, he might even solve our opening batting problem as well. Well, but I mean, he he batted, the out the team. But first innings he batted well. Sec, second innings, I think it was it was a bit of a tired shot because there, there were times when he looked tired, um, bowling. But yeah, it was it was it was sort of across the line. He sort of closed the face on it. It was. It was yeah, just a little bit of a of a of a tie shot. So no no fault um a portion there to, to Archie. But yeah, he looked good first innings. Um that's kind of the benchmark where you, you say you wanna uh, judge him and just didn't look out of trouble against, you know, Roach and Warrell too. <laughs> Brilliant bowlers and then Shakib came on as well and he looked perfectly at home against him. And how was he out? Caught behind. Um oh he absolutely well, Paddy. A few people have said he absolutely hit the cover off one who was given not out early on day one, but uh, oh well, never mind. Tell your story, walking. Sorry, um, Tom Abel as well batted really well. Um, yep. Shakib got in with a good one. He good he's body. a good body. He made Abel Abel was in brilliant form. He made him look uh, a little bit village, as we say. But 
yeah, Tom Banton, 132. I, it's just such a shame that on the in the season where he's really made his mark in both forms of, of cricket, that he's now, well, we think he's not going to be playing the part. If he plays at finals day, I would be absolutely shocked. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, at yeah, post match, Jason Kerr was asked, you know, what what do you think? And, he's, and you know, I'm obviously waiting for the result of his MRI to come back. But uh, if he if he plays at finals day, it's going to be a, a Lazarus style resurrection. Uh, <laughs> he, yeah, you know, it's going to need divine intervention for for Bans to make finals day. I think so. Uh, but yeah, we will come on to finals day in a minute. Obviously, that is that is looming. Um, I've got a million and one things that I, w- I want to talk about this game still, and and I and I keep forgetting. There's just so much. I mean, it's just a a mad, mad, mad last hour. Um, yeah. So the table now reads: Division One, Surrey played twelve. They lost two. Who's who's their other lost two? Hampshire. It was the, the round where we lost to Durham. Surrey also lost to Hampshire. In that right. Round. Okay. We were trying to wonder. So yeah. So. Uh, Surrey uh, played 12, won 7, lost 2, drawn 3, 198 points. Somerset played 12, won 5, which is probably our highest tally of wins for a good while. Lost just one. Should we just do the championship on games not lost? And then we went uh, 190, and then Hampshire are third on 171. So eight points, touching distance. Yeah. It's on. I mean, we're still... We're it's inevitable. I've been saying for... since we started doing the pods this season, it is utterly inevitable. So don't worry about it. <laughs> we will oh, be champions God. in two or three weeks' time, whenever it is. Uh, it, oh, no. uh, it will have to be at the end of the in the Hampshire game because I don't think we can win it um, uh, next week mathematically. Yes, sorry. Or use massive bats, which um, yeah, maybe. yeah. Uh, it's Without funny it that. I've got a bit of a quiz question for you, Dan. Guess who turned up? Yeah, guess who was uh, who instantly brought up bat gauges as a topic of conversation upon their arrival to the county ground? Possibly, of course, Mr. Mr. Topley. Topley. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, he was talking about what? Well, whose responsibility? It's not the club's responsibility. It's a player's responsibility. Um, mm, they still might have. They, they still might have points deducted for their tit for tat declarations, which I think are uh, oh, yeah. much more points deduction worthy. Um, well, at least. At least Essex are out of it now, so there's no possibility of them colluding to what so that one of them wins yeah. the last game, Essex and Surrey, and you know fuck us over. Uh, well, there's, this still could be. There's a also a distinct there. possibility of them not giving a shit in the last game as well, which is quite worrying. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's at Chelmsford, um, and there is a possibility that we could win both games and Surrey win both games and we overtake yeah. them. It, you know, if, if Surrey have a game where they get 249 and don't get any batting points and we have two really good batting games, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's so many scenarios going forward. We probably do need a favour from Durham or Essex still, um, but it's so much closer than it, than it was. And we now can probably afford, if we win both and Surrey win and draw, we've probably done it. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if it had been, if this game had been a draw, we probably would have been needing Surrey to lose both, yeah. or maybe if, if, draw one, if we'd one. have drawn. Well, if we'd have drawn, it would. Have, I think it would have been game over, and that's what Surrey thought as well. Obviously, which is why they yeah. never for, for a second tried to win that game. Yeah, well, they're winning. It would have basically put it to bed. Like yeah. it would have been completely done. A draw was like, probably you could Surrey, have danced. You, right, you could know, have danced but... around Taunton like Essex did five years ago. You could have won the championship yeah. at Taunton. You could have yeah. dominated. You could have put us in our place and said, "We are better than you. We're going to come to your ground and win the title." But you didn't. You bottled it. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. Back to London yeah, with I you. Think, and I think the whole country will be cheering us on. I think everyone yeah. wants to see someone different win the county championship as well. And it's going to be two yeah. amazing weeks, hopefully. Nineteen thousand there were on the stream coming to the end. Pretty yeah, good amazing. going. Um, right. So after putting Surrey to bed, we now move on to Surrey. Mm-hmm. Because we have one day now. This is mental this time of year. We've got one day now yeah. to digest yeah. this, put this all to bed, do a day's work, get up, and then go to Edgbaston on Saturday for finals day, where we face Surrey. What day is it today? Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday the 12th, Friday the 13th tomorrow. Good job we're not playing then. And then finals day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Um, we talked about Banton um, not playing. 
George Thomas, mm-hmm. who did come in, well, was loaned out, or well, not loaned out, he played for Gloucester Seconds this week, which is... Yeah. Very um, strange. It is very strange. Also, as soon as Banton was injured, he wasn't immediately told to get thy ass back from Rockhampton down to Taunton, please, because we might need you on Saturday. Although Jason Kerr did say that he would more likely than not be opening the batting in the One Day Cup final. I've oh, got that as well. One Day Cup final in the weekend's in a week's time. Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ! Well, we're getting our the, money's the, worth, aren't we? I know. It's this month. This month is insane. It's insane. If I am still happily married come the 1st of October, it's going to be a fucking <laughs> miracle, I tell you. And yeah. I'm, I'm, Even worse, I took Hannah's car up to North Hands. I got a speeding ticket on the way back. So oh, I'm doing 82 dear. and a 70 um, at 10 minutes past one in the morning. Well, I've already... Did I talk about my, my, my basic bad sat-nav? It's not... It, I'm not going to go into it, but anyway. If, I'll be what starting to grab my speeding ticket. We, we do need to talk about the North Fans game, don't we? I don't think there's been a podcast since. Has there, there hasn't been a podcast since. Uh, right, yeah. uh, we'll sum up North Fans. Uh, no yep. food. Uh, they had the better, yeah. the better of the conditions. Uh, we sort of, we did enough. They were always, they always seemed to be in it, but they were never quite caught up. Um, and I got a speeding ticket. Anything else? Uh, Bounce better brilliantly. Tiggy started yeah. slow, but once he got going, he looked yeah. good, and it's it's you know ahead of finals day. It's good that he's found some form again after well a bit of a struggle in the group stage. Although I was surprised to find he was like our second highest. He's now our second highest run scorer in the blast, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't feel like he had a great group stage. Uh, Smead is due a score. He scored some runs yeah. to the second eleven this you week, which is good. In so today, didn't yeah, uh, yeah. So hopefully he's he can get a big score on finals day. Um, yeah, it's just a shame we probably won't have Bance. But, you know, as we know, George yeah. Thomas has done a, did a pretty good job in the group stage when he played. So, uh, um, yeah, it'd be good to have him come in. Although I'm a little bit worried about bowling. I think, it's, I think they would have had him back down from the Gloucester Seconds game. But that game did finish yesterday. Mm, yeah, but if he got injured in the Seconds game, we would have been down two openers for finals day. Yeah, well, I, I don't think he's going to be named yeah. in the squad yeah. anyway from conversations that I've heard today. So, mm-hmm. um, well, that's a massive shame. It is, but yeah, I think um, it is quite sad as well that, you know, it appears that he's, he's going to be off because I like GT. Yeah. I think from last year to this year, he's made a hell of a lot of progress. I think he looks much more yeah. mature. Last year, he was a bit bash, bash, bash. This year, he looks more cultured. He looks more confident in his, his ability. Um his bowling's come on a little bit as well. So, I, you know, I mean, you would have liked it to kept them on for maybe another year, maybe two, just to see where he goes. Absolutely. Um, but I don't know. I mean, we aren't sorry. Also... So we, we can't have everybody that we like. Do you know what I mean? It's Yeah. But let's not forget as well, he, he burst up to scene in 2021, scored at 80-odd on his debut against Leicester show. He did then miss 2022 with injury. I mean, he may have played some second eleven early that year, but he missed most of that season with injury, if I recall correctly. Showed promise last year and showed a lot of promise yeah. this year in both the Blast and the one they cut. So I don't know if it's his choice to leave or the club letting him go. Uh, but uh, it's uh, either way, I find it mm-hmm. baffling. Like, he's got so well, much talent. Well, it's, it's funny because, I mean... We've given Finn Hill a pro contract mm. and we're letting George Thomas go when Finn Hill is still a little bit of an unknown quantity yeah. and George Thomas isn't. Mm. So I, I don't know. I mean, whether he feels that he wants to play red ball cricket and he'll be more of a regular in a T20 side somewhere else rather than a reserve. I don't know, because yeah. if you're a batter looking to get into that T20 side, it is pretty rock solid at the moment. To get your way in, you have to wait for an injury like um, has happened to Banton, which we will discuss immediately right now, Dan. Who's going to open the batting on Saturday morning? Um, or possibly just after midday so, on Saturday. Let me think. If if George Thomas isn't going to be playing, then I suppose it has to be Smead and TKC. Um, but then the question is, who? well, alternatively... It'll be someone who comes into the side, mm-hmm. and that could be Rue, it could be Goldsworthy. Uh, I can't see either of them opening, though. It's difficult. I mean, Rue, if Rue plays, then it'll be his first ever last match. Uh, yeah. He could sort in at number three. He could sort of do a bit of a Tom Abel role there. 
um, goals that he has. He batted three on Father's Day in 2021, I think, in one of the games. Yeah, he, he did look. You know, he looked, he's not. It, yeah, he's, he's not a rogue player in in the way that I know. Rue's no. not a. You wouldn't associate Rue with being a big hitter like Smead, but I think Rue is more Rue's game than it is Goldsworthy's game. Um, yeah. yeah, probably is. Yeah, I don't. I you've got Lamanby as well. Um, oh yeah, of course, yeah. And Lamanby, yeah, that's true actually. Lamas might well come in actually. Now I you mention it a, because Lamas, he, he's a different beast against... when he's opening the batting when the field's up. Yeah, because I'd have he opened against a... Essex last year in the group stage. Yeah, and did well. That Maybe one, yeah. Actually, yeah. And he, he was, might come in oh, and. Uh, he will be a left-hander to go with Smead, and maybe, uh, maybe then Tikasu will come in at three. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about Lamas, so yeah, I reckon yeah. That it'll probably so, will be Lamas. Plus, Lamas, I hate to mention it, but Lamas has already won a trophy this year in a short-form competition, uh, and that might come into it too. Being a specialist fielder for the yeah. Yeovil Invincibles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's a coin flip for me between Lamas and Rue, to be honest. Yeah. I think Rue, I'd probably go Rue, because I think Rue has scored more... Um, white ball runs in a what? Well, he's gone through the gears more in in white ball cricket this year, where he just, I think he's got yeah. that gear to go boom, boom, boom. I mean, Lamanby has as well. I mean, you know, we keep forgetting that it seems incredible now that Lamanby's just lost his way in white ball cricket so much. When he was the guy who's played possibly the greatest, one of the greatest white ball innings in the history of this bloody club. So, mm, yeah, I know. I don't know. It's mm. it's really difficult. I. To... Yeah. yeah, I can see it being Lamb and B, to be honest. Um, and then obviously Tika C would keep wicket, but the alternative is Rue comes in and keeps wicket. I, would, I mean, maybe, yeah, I'd say that. Rue. I mean, Rue had a bit of a, he had a bit of a, not a dodgy game with the gloves, but he wasn't at his mm. best. I think yeah. this is probably the first game where he's, he's been subjected to this relentless spin, 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 spin. And it, it, it does take it out of you being stood up. It's a lot more mentally draining than, than being stood back. Take it from me. Um, yeah. There was a couple of technical things I noticed. First innings, um, and he, this happened against Durham as well. He's he's holding his gloves to the line of the ball when he stood up. But you want to be holding your gloves to the line of the outside edge or possibly trying to take the ball in one hand outside the outside edge. That way, if it does deflect... Boom, it goes off. So I'm a very, very good wicket keeper told me that. Um, so it's not my tip. And yeah, a couple on the yeah, Durham in the first innings, he was keeping to the line of the ball, and then you know, you can see on the replay his left glove is behind the bat, which is no good to anybody. But the catch he took today, I think it was off Burns, he got his gloves outside the line of the um outside the line of the outside edge, which is where you need to be as a keeper. So hopefully, um, he sorted that little technical issue out for good. Um, oh, we've got about Brett Randall. What do we make about him in the limited? Um, what did he bowl? Thirteen overs in the match, none for forty-three, I think, in total. Yeah, not gonna lie. I think you'll have to cover this because I didn't really see any of the first two days. So, uh, well, um, I think the the speed gun had him at like 73, 74, 75 mile an hour. So. But the speed gun had Andy, it clocked one Andy and me delivery 89 miles an hour last week. So I think it may just need a little tweak, Ben. I know you like the speed gun, but it may just need a <laughs> little bit of a, a recalibration. It might be on the on the slow side because he certainly wasn't bowling 74, 75 mile an hour. He looked decent. I think we could maybe have given him a a bit more of a go. But, you know, I said that we just pulled off one of the greatest victories in the history. Well, I say we. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we just experienced yeah, um, one of the greatest victories in the history of the club. Um, so I think seeing him with a Duke's ball in a in a week or so's yeah. time will probably be more of a uh, more of a test. Him. But he, you know, he's, I think I clocked it about fifty overs before he even touched the ball in Surrey's second inning. So <laughs> hey, oh, uh, but uh, came recommended by uh, Matt Henry. So um, obviously a decent mm-hmm. guy, and a decent player, and a hell of a jawline as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, not. very lovely floppy hair as well. Um, yeah, you know, as you say, I think he'll bowl, he'll bowl more at Old Trafford in the last game against yeah. Hampshire. That's when we, with the Dukes, that's when we'll really see 
how good he is. And also, when we when we sign overseas bowlers, they always score runs at some point. They always smash a quick yeah. 50 at some point. Henry did it on debut. Wagner did it, I think, his second game. Martin Delanger did it on debut. So that's that's still to come. But Brett Randall's quick 50, 60, 70. Can't wait. Oh, it's got to be. Of course, Miggy P, the forgotten man this season. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. He's definitely back in um, back in South Africa now. We've confirmed that. It's on his Instagram story. I was looking at the podcast schedule because, you know, Somerset have got a massive mental schedule going on at the moment. I'm not sure when we're recording next. So I'm just going to check that out because we've, of course, got the one-day cup final. Sorry, finals day on Saturday. Uh, I presume you're up there, Dan, seeing as you are a native of uh, the second city these days. Yeah, I'm heading up uh, Saturday morning with Harry Everett. I mean, no side has ever retained it. I'm I'm not confident. I'm going to put my cards on the table, I think. If you look last year that Matt Henry and Ish Sodi took eight wickets between them in the final. Yeah. That's... It's, it's a I... big hole in the bowling. Roloff's not been his self. Uh, you could potentially say we're replacing Matt Henry with Jake Ball. We've got no overseas, no Riley Meredith. Um, it's got to be difficult, but not impossible. I think the key is we have got to chase. I don't think we can defend with our bowling attack, but with our batting, I think we can chase anything. Potentially, yeah. Uh, although batting press is often the way to go on final stadium. Obviously, it worked for well, Sarsen. Yeah, well, yeah. But yeah, we, yeah. We, I mean, well, we have been better at chasing this year um, throughout the tournament. Um, and yeah, I I agree to, to an extent. I um, we're clearly not. We don't have the same vibe or aura this year compared to last year. We're not. We're not the same team. The bowling in particular is nowhere near as good as last year. The bowling is what won us the tournament last year. Yeah, Matt Henry, yeah. Ben Green, Isoli, Craig Overson, they were all absolutely mm-hmm. unbelievable. This year we just haven't had that same. You know, last year we were going into games and we just bowled them out almost every time. There was just that. So when we were defending, we just. But you just knew we were going to defend it because we always got wickets in the power play. We had quality, you know, quality spin through the middle, particularly when we had Sodi and Ben Green as well through the middle. But you know, Ben Green is he's still taking a few wickets this year, but he's struggled a bit. He's he's been he's expensive not. at times. Ball is yeah, nowhere near Matt Henry. Even Craig Oberson didn't have quite as good of a group stage as as last year, although he was very good in the quarterfinal. Um, you know, we've, we've still got Lewis Gregory. He's obviously a, an excellent option. Yeah, he, he, wrapped, he wrapped himself in cotton wool the last four days, didn't he? Did, did he well, bowl yeah. at all, did he? No, it didn't bowl, no. No, he didn't. Um, Van der Merwe as well. That's the gig, isn't it? Specialist captain batting at nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Van der Merwe as well hasn't had the best of tournaments, and I'm oh. not sure I'd even pick him for the fin- for finals day, which is controversial, but God, well, he did a we'd like to say this tournament. is Dan's fine appearance on Always Look on the Bright Side Life. Dan, it's been uh, a fine four years having you on, but I'm afraid you can't Thanks say such like No, I, uh, all joking aside, um, I don't know if you were on last time or not. No, you were loaned out, weren't you? Because you were part of our, our great loan spell. You and Chris were loaned off uh, to other podcasts yeah. for, for <laughs> that. Time, but no, um, I would potentially still put Roloff just because I think he has got a big moment in him. He's got, a, I think he's still got a match winning moment. There, that catch at North Hans, that was a, a tricky one. You know, that was a wet ball. I mean, I walked on the outfield um, sort of doing the post match and it was quite slippery. I just had normal trainers on, but I wouldn't have felt confident, you know, sprinting and turning on it. Um, and I didn't have spikes, but it felt, you know, it was. It was it was pretty slippery, so it, it was difficult bowling conditions there. So, you know, we definitely, um, it potentially with a dry ball and a dry dry conditions, that win would have been a lot more comfortable. Um, yeah, I think. And Roloff um, did he bowl? He did bowl five decent balls, didn't he? I think was I sat next to you when he was he bowled his only over. I think I was possibly yeah yeah for twelve yeah he bowled five really decent balls, and I think he was none yeah he was like none for four or number five off his first five balls and then Willie hit him yeah, into the burger van for six. Yeah. Um so you know little moments like that is can kind of just change how you perceive how a player's gone in in one evening. I think yeah with battle ball I you know I I know Rolos got one last hurrah in him. He missed finals day last year. That will have yeah. not annoyed him but you know he would have you know, one of the greatest moments in the club's history that that campaign to miss the the, the crowning glory of that 
And I would have loved to be been a part of that. And not not for the vanity, for the glory, or for not having contributed to it. Do you know what I mean? Because he's such a, a team player, such a, a great guy that I'm going to start crying at the minute, roll off. I love you. But do you know what I mean? You <laughs> would have really annoyed him that he wasn't he wasn't able to help, you know, win the side with the trophy. So I think, yeah, I think this year he's he's going to be Sean, the Sean Dixon of finals day this year. He's he's roll off. Okay. This is it. Roll off is going to turn up on finals day. You heard it right here. Well, Exclusive. I think we need to keep all options open. I think we need to be open to playing two or even three spinners. We know that Edge Bastard on finals day can turn it as the yeah. day goes on. If we get to the final, we might want to play two spinners. Um, and I think we should keep open the option of playing Aldridge as well, because I just, mm. I'm not hugely inspired by a bowling attack, including both Jake Ball and Josh Davey. And it was pretty samey at North Ants, wasn't it? That's the only thing. It, we kind yeah. of, there wasn't, there wasn't really a moment where we won the game where you felt, right, that is an impact wicket where we have now, won the, I suppose, and, and got Willie, but it, we just kind of dragged it and dragged it and slowed them and slowed them and slowed them and, until they, they weren't really in a position to win the game. Um, or did you know Gunfielder? I mean, they did change it last last year where they they uh dropped Bashir and bought Aldridge in for the final. So you know they are open to changing things and not sticking with the um the eleven that necessarily plays in the semi final. So yeah, yeah, I mean the only thing I might I was looking forward to you know maybe getting Golders in, but he just didn't really seem to have an answer to Curran. And if that mm, and yeah. talk about matchups and again, he, and that matchup could potentially happen again in the final, and do you know what I mean? He didn't have the nerves to think, right? Well, he's having a go at me here, so I'm going to yeah, try and he, do this. But he had a good group stage with Leicestershire for sure. Although, um, and this isn't to do him down at all, but I do think that North grounds can often be bigger, and Grace Road is a big playing surface, mm-hmm. and that may have helped him a bit. Although Edge Basson is a big ground as well, so but. Yeah, and obviously we know the North Group isn't as good as the South Group, so maybe that's partly why God nope. has had a... Oh, is it four South Group teams rate. again? Yeah, oh, maybe it is, yes. Third year out of four. It's amazing, isn't it? And also, the stars have aligned where it could be a side of Derby final. I know. But there I'm was, there was one of those, wasn't there, in 1999, I think, in the CNG Trophy or the NatWest Trophy. It, it has happened before. Was, what? No, 2001 was Leicester, wasn't it? Yeah, 1999 was... Yeah. Yeah, Gloucester, uh, yeah. 1999 Nat West Trophy. I think Lords ran out of Yeah, Gloucester and Somerset. Yeah, Gloucestershire won. No, yeah. Jack Russell highlight reel always pops up on Twitter, doesn't it? Where he's. <laughs> yeah. I thought they'd have been a bloody good T20. They hadn't, they'd never won it, have they, Gloucester? That, they'd have been a good T20 uh, no. back in that day. Um, yeah, so we'll drink Edgbaston Dry of Cider, which is that awful Stoford yeah. Press piss, but you know. You can't take your own, so you've got to take the rough with the smooth. Um, I'm done. I need to go and unwind. I need to, well, actually, I don't. I need to, I need to go and get Theo from Cubs. So we've got five minutes. Um, I was going to say listeners' questions, but this is a completely unscheduled podcast, so uh, <laughs> there are none. Um, uh, oh, yes, Somerset fans and members, can you learn the second verse to Blackbird? Because if you look at the video on Twitter that I um, I recorded of us singing along with a good good uh, fifty or sixty Somerset fans and members outside the home dressing room, everybody knows the first verse of Blackbird, and I'm stood there like a twat singing the second verse on my own, <laughs> and I feel like uh, okay, uh, you know, like you get <laughs> to do karaoke in the pub and you've not had a drink and you feel incredibly self conscious. So yes, please learn the second verse to Blackbird. It is available on. Uh, that there into web so uh, do that for um ready for the final Edgbaston on saturday final and trent bridge uh in a week or so's time i've got some t-shirts now i'm gonna show you t-shirts nice these are good these these are i've been, I've been making my own t-shirts so these have just got here today so the one that i'm wearing on saturday is uh, is not here i'll be posting these on uh, on twitter as well if you want to have a look i'm aware that we are not quite a visual podcast. So let us know what your favourite is, Dan. Here we go. So the first one. Here we go. Oh, oh I've got a £5 voucher and a uh, a little packet of sweets. That's happy days. Right here. Oh, they're all folded up together. So this is T-shirt one. Nice. Oh, yeah. Very good. Brian. Yep, perfect. Logo. Love I, think it. I put that on, on Twitter. How's that look? Yep. Oh, I thought it was bigger than that. Anyway. 
next one is pretty boring. It is just the uh, the county ground in a sort of a London style road sign. Yeah, yeah. To the right place, but though. And the third one, this is for next week. Hey, Hashtag Metro Bank Fever. There we go. So and fuck the hundred on the back, right? Uh, no, I haven't got that one. I could write, get a yeah. fuck the hundred T-shirt, I suppose. <laughs> Anyways, um, right? Shall we go and um, have a little lie down and just rewatch that last hour on the yeah. stream and get it all going again? Yeah. Read um, it all in. Drink it all in. Yeah. Right. It's, Do it, well, next, it, next. it is. It, as a, it was one of the greatest county championship games I've ever known. I mean, I, I only saw a couple of hours, two or three hours of it in total yeah. live, but I'm gl- bloody glad I did. It's an unbelievable game of cricket for the neutral yeah. and for, for Somerset fans. Um, and I'm so glad we come out on top because it is a huge win, you know, it, for the history yeah, of the club well. because it's, of what it could now lead to. Like, the yeah, the next just... two weeks. That just the, the everything about it was, you know, the end of the game. If you know, if that had been a a meaningless mid-table division two game, it would have been a, still been a fantastic finish and probably would yeah. have had a few views on the thousand views on the stream. Add into that that it's the two top teams in Division One. Add into that that if Surrey win or draw, they're probably going to win the title. And then add into that Somerset are chasing their first ever county championship pennant. My God, why do we need this fucking hundred nonsense when you've got that? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Any use? Any it use? It is undefeated. Will never be defeated. It's the greatest um, form of the greatest sport, in my opinion. Absolutely, one hundred percent agree. But we'll go and watch some T Twenty on Saturday anyway. Oh yeah, of course. I like <laughs> all three formats, but the county championship is, of course, the pinnacle. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Well, the victory party for today's game starts at around about half past 10 uh, at Edgbaston on Saturday. So hoping to see as many of you there as possible. Uh, Dan, I'm sure I'll see you all there. What's the stand that we're in? Uh, the Somerset fans have got to uh, against. There's something up or is the, it Stanley Barnes upper? Yeah. For some reason, we've been put absolutely miles away. Uh, it's not the best view, I don't think, from there. But we'll it's do. a conspiracy. A conspiracy yeah, again. It probably is. All right. Good stuff. Well. Right. I'll see you Saturday, mate. Thanks for listening. Yep, see, you and, yep, see you Saturday as well. Ta-ra. Cool. Cheers, All mate. Right. Let me take. Cheers, Dan. Yep. Ta-ra. See you Saturday. Bye. See you Saturday.